Hello everybody, I am Dr. Karan Bhatia. I am a cornea, cataract and refractive surgeon and today I will be talking about the basics of manual small incision cataract surgery or MSICS. Now, residents today are bundled with the question whether to do FACO or SICS. They are, keep on running after FACO as of how many FACOs will I get to do in my residency. But they should remember that the fact that manual small incision cataract surgery is a very very important surgery and paves the pathway to become a good FACO surgeon. If you can manage your own complications via SICS, you can do that the same in FACO. Moreover, SICS gives you a good handling of tissues and the anterior chamber dynamics. So I believe that one should first become a good SICS surgeon and then only should go to FACO because FACO is a piece of cake for good SICS surgeons. India has a big number of blind people and of which cataract is a leading cause. SICS has its role particularly in developing countries like India where we have to face the problem of cost with quality. So SICS requires very minimal equipments and a very short period of time to do the surgery. Because of this, it is a very very handful tool in our surgical armory. So coming to the residents, the choice of case is very very important when you initially start your surgeries. Take up simple cases, when in doubt call a senior, be confident but not overconfident. The next thing is the choice of anesthesia. So we have a peribulbar block, we have a subtedens block, we have a subconjunctival block and then we can also do under topical anesthesia. However, I would recommend all of you to do under peribulbar anesthesia because the patient feels less pain, the eye does not move and as such you will enjoy a good surgery. The first step while doing SICS is a superior rectus middle suture. It is very important especially in the initial stages. It gives good globe stability and one should always do under a microscope. Let's take a look at this video. Now using a superior rectus forceps one can easily get hold of the superior rectus and pass the brittle suture underneath it. One should wait for the needle to pass and the thread to also come out before releasing the forceps. Now, the importance of this is it gives you makes the surgery much easier. Later on you can do surgery without it but initially you should always do all your cases using a superior rectus brittle suture. The next is a conjunctival flap. Now good dissection is very very important to do a good surgery. Remember you should not have any tenons there and cauterize as much as required only. Over cauterization can lead to damage of the tissue and increase astigmatism as well. SICS is based on the Cox funnel incision. If you look at the picture on the left hand side of the screen, you can see the funnel being drawn here very nicely. Now incision given in this area induces lesser amount of astigmatism. Then let's go to the SICS. The concept is based on a triplanar incision as is seen on the figure on the right hand side. Now this incision is first is a scratch incision then is the tunnel and then is the internal incision. Now we have various incisions. The first incision is a straight incision, the second is a frown incision and the next is the chevron incision and the last one is the smiling incision which we should not give. Straight is okay, so is frown and so is chevron. But smiling is not. Chevron induces the least amount of astigmatism, then by frown and then by straight. Initially, residents should start by doing a straight incision because this facilitates easy delivery of the nucleus. Later on, you can shift to astigmatic friendly incisions like the frown or the chevron incision. 
Some people do give straight incisions with back cuts as well. That's also fine. But the last one one should not be giving is a smiling incision. This induces a lot amount of astigmatism. Now again, coming to SICS, it's the internal incision over here is bigger than the external incision. And the ideal incision is about 1 to 2 millimeters away from the border of the limbus, the anterior border. It's about one third to half thickness of the sclera and it goes about 1 to 1.5 millimeters into the cornea. Now the tenotomy is very important after you give the incision. You can scratch with the help of the blade and then give an incision. This is kind of like a frown incision that I have given over here. Now initially you should go for larger incisions and later on you can shift to smaller incisions. You can measure with the help of calipers also to record or to see how much incision you are giving. The next is what I call as grazing the incision. This can be done with the help of a crescent knife where you just minutely, very minutely find the plane where which you will start making the tunnel. Now I have a couple of modifications. Now one is the no conjunctival flap technique. Now what happens here is you can give the incision directly over the conjunctiva in such a manner. Let's look at the other video. Now I have gripped it over here at 6 o'clock and then I have given the incision. Now advantage of this technique is that it preserves the limbal stem cells, there is less fibrosis and it leaves a comparatively virgin conjunctiva. It is fairly easy with experience but beginners can have a problem with depth perception. Now coming to the next part that is the grip and the tunnel. So in the grip part you can give a vertical incision just next to the incision and that can you can hold uh, the, the eye with that and then you, with the crescent you introduce inside go with the wriggly fashion and then sideways movement on to create the second part of the, the SICS tunnel that is the tunnel. Let's look at another video. Now this video again I am grazing the incision, I am going inside, here I am you can see so then after wriggly motion sideways movement and then a little bit amount of side pocket creation will be there. You can increase the side pockets uh, for a larger cornea and then a larger cataracts with the dimpling down motion induce the keratone and then with forward movements you are supposed to cut and make the internal incision. Now in this last video you must have noticed I held the globe at 6 o'clock position. Now this gives a very good globe stability. You can hold even at the temporal or the, or the nasal limbus you can hold that. It doesn't matter where you hold you just have to have a good grip. You could, if you look at the, the two figures that I have drawn on the top of the screen the one is the crescent which shows the movement the wriggly motion of the crescent and then the sideways movement to form the rest part of the tunnel and the next one is of the keratome where you're supposed to go inside and then you're supposed to go with forward movements and then make the internal incision. Now when do you do a temporal section? We have been doing superior sections or superotemporal sections as well. So temporal is more in cases of indications are the high against the rule astigmatism or if you have the presence of a superior filtering bleb. Advantages, it induces less amount of astigmatism in comparison to the superior incision. There is no bro effect and it is easier to do in deeper orbits. It gives a good red glow also. Disadvantages is orientation for the surgeon is a big problem here. If you are not good enough with SICS, if you're not an experienced surgeon, you should go for superior incision for higher astigmatisms, ATRs as well, but then you suture the tunnel. The next step is the can opener's capsulotomy or any ways by which you want to tackle the anterior capsule. So one should first learn can opener's capsulotomy before one goes on to do rexis because any time you have a problem you can always convert to a can opener's capsulotomy. So this should be done from uncut to cut area and you should give about 15 to 20 cuts per quadrant. Remember, learn first can openers, 
then go for Rexis because any extension, any problem you have, you can always get away by doing can openers capsulotomy. A good can openers with 15 to 20 cuts per quadrant is almost as good as a circular Rexis. Now let's go to the Rexis that is the continuous curvilinear capsular Rexis. Now we've got two forces that we have in play over here. One is the shearing force and the second is the ripping force. The shearing force is the pulling force that is concentrated at the point of tearing and it is the same direction as the tear. The next force is the ripping force and tear tends to control, uncontrollably extend then when you use it. When grasping the instrument is held stationary. More forces are required and the force distributed is over a larger area, it is less desirable. So when we do rexis, we do a combination of both of these, but more desirable is the shearing force. So when you're doing a rexis, it is important to maintain a chamber depth by injecting an ample amount of viscoelastic substances like uh, visco inside the anterior chamber. You make the lens flat and then the rexis will not extend beyond. Generally, we use a combination of the shearing and the ripping force. So when it's normally going, you use a shearing force and when it's going extending, you bring it towards the center, you pull towards the center, that is the ripping force. In a CCC, when you do it, the figure is inside, the first one is actually mentioned wrong, it is inside to outside, that is how you're supposed to do it and outside to inside as a second figure, you're not supposed to do that. Now let's, you should inject dye in all your initial cases, later on you can do under retro illumination or, or a good when there is a good glow as well, but specifically for brown and hard cataracts do a can openers rather than do a rexis in your initial cases. When you are a good surgeon or a confident surgeon or you've done a good amount of cases then you should, then you can do anything you want. Small rexis always give relaxing cuts, now with small rex, the relaxing cuts should be when you're giving at one of at suppose uh, 12 o'clock you should give the other at 6 o'clock so opposite cuts relaxing cuts and just don't give two or four relaxing cuts you should give multiple give eight to ten relaxing cuts it relaxes the capsule and this is very helpful in small rexus situations and if you look at the figures that i have drawn on the bottom lower hand of the screen you can see now there's a modification now generally we do our rexus via the side port so when you do the rexus via the side port uh, i recommend is that you make the cut the initial cut in a c-shaped fashion towards the 12 o'clock or the 11 o'clock position and then you raise the flap now this basically and then you do the rexis so this makes the advantage because if you are extending from the center to about five o'clock or six o'clock and then raising the flap and then in the rexis the bigger part of the flap of the rexis actually comes out through the side port when you're in that area and then beginning stages you can have a problem so you can do it like this you'll find it very easy let's take a look at couple of videos so over here the first video i am making a side port entry injecting up ample amount of viscoelastic substances and then i've made a c-shaped cut and then i'm doing i'm using the shearing force over here and doing a good amount of good rexes let's look at the second video now one should also be able to do rexes via the main port you should be good in all ways you don't know when the situation will come so over here the needle should be pressed over the upper lip remember sics when you press over the upper lip the anterior chamber is formed whereas if you press the lower lip it will collapse the anterior chamber the next technique is one of my favorite techniques is the envelope technique of handling the anterior capsule this is more useful for hypermature morgagnin cataracts where what you do is you with the keratome only you incise the anterior capsule you inject visco inside the anterior chamber then you can give two cuts it's a modified envelope technique where you can give two cuts with the varnish scissors and then again after injecting ovd you can use a utrata forceps and complete a good rexis now this is very much advantageous specifically in these cases because they have a very weak zonules and you don't want to you know cause a big problem and it's comparatively very fast as well now this next slide i would suggest a changed order for beginning surgeons like first you would do is a superior rectus pedal suture make the side port do the rexis and then make the tunnel because the advantage is if you're making a tunnel, initially you have complications. So you can have a premature entry. You touch the iris, the pupils constricts, 
and then you're done you can't do any part of the surgery you have to call the senior or something a surgery is gone so you make you do the rexis first the major part of the cat tuck is done if you do a good rexis is done the surgery is almost like that's the main thing so you can easily then even if you have a premature entry there's already visco inside the anterior chamber you won't collapse now the question that will come how will you know that the premature entry can, uh, that the premature entry has taken place obviously visco will come out when you watch if you had a premature entry now the next is a cortical cleavage hydrodissection now this is very very important because you, if you do a good well cells the equatorial cells come out and you don't have to do a lot of ia as well and the nucleus comes out very nicely let's look at the video it's a slow motion video where you first take out a little bit of the visco then you go underneath the anterior capsule and you can see you start injecting to the equator you see the fluid wave coming out then you tap in the center of the lens and then you can go to the other side and do it like that also i generally do a multi quadrantic hydro in all my cases the next is the now coming techniques of nucleus prolapse so first is the hydro prolapse where after with the hydro you prolapse one pole and you with the hydro needle only hydro cannula you can start to rotate the nucleus out into the anterior chamber now this is the second one is the most commonly done is the sinski hook where after uh, you do a hydro tap on the center of the lens to the other side hydro and then after injecting amount of some amount of ovd you can use a sinski hook to rotate the lens and then by rotating movements you can bring it into the anterior chamber the next technique is the bimanual technique i'm sorry i don't have a video i will try to upload it when i get a case where i've used it the next one is the tumbling technique now this technique i would not recommend for beginning surgeons it should be a, you should be an expert surgeon to do this and second of all the grade of the cataract should not extend beyond grade 2 to 3 a harder cataract there's a big problem of a nucleus drop and uh, complications as such so don't do it for hard cataracts and as a beginner so here after doing a good hydro one pole prolapses out and then you just tilt the lens you flip the lens into the anterior chamber it's very fast very fast surgery almost all the epinucleus and whatever that also comes out then coming to nucleus delivery as i said the concept of mic msics is that the left upper lip when you lift the upper lip the ac is formed and this is advantages for doing rexis and for doing irrigation aspiration when you're doing when you're depressing the lower lip the ac becomes shallow and this is what is used for nucleus delivery give counter traction now this is very important you pull the superior rectus when you just about to take it out from the uh, in tunnel and you also use, you can also use forceps at 6 o'clock to give that amount of counter traction now coming to the various ways we've got this is the most commonly done that is the visco expression you inject visco above and behind the lens and then uh, press over the tunnel in the side side the side of the tunnel and the nucleus comes out by this this is very endothelial friendly and gives a very very good result the next is the hydro expression you should be a little bit good to do experience to do this where the same can be done using hydro uh, saline or bss now come the other method is the vectus delivery with the help of a vectus you hold the lens and then you uh, the, this vectus what this does is it, it causes the nucleus to the stereal stretching occurs by the nucleus and by depressing the posterior lip and giving counter traction with the help of a superior rectus bridle suture or uh, by uh, forceps and if you have a irrigating wire vectus then there's internal hydrostatic pressure is in, uh, produced by it when you Uh, inject the bss with it and this helps to take out the lens so this is a video i will show of vectus delivery this is courtesy by the arvind eye care system i borrowed it from them so you are engaging the nucleus and you can see that the lower lip of the tunnel is depressed and then this lens is taken out now we'll see another video of vectus now you inject it's a small it's not coming out small lens it is not coming out so you can go by the vectus you can hold the lens give counter traction and easily bring it out via the tunnel let's look at another video of the vectus 
Now this, after prolapsing the lens into the anterior chamber, after injecting OVD, you can ask the sister to actually pull the superior rectus here if you're using a forceps along with it. You have pressed the lower lip in, after engaging the nucleus in the rectus and bring it out. It's very easy to do with it. See, if you're having any difficulty while doing nucleus delivery, remember one thing. In the incision size is not adequate. Increase the incision size. You don't want to cause damage. Okay, the, the more amount of tissue respect you give, the eye will and the result will respect you in that manner. Another one is the sandwich technique where you can use a vectus and a dialer or you can even use a visco cannula or a hydro cannula to take it out. Uh, then coming to eye implantation. Eye implantation initially you should do under visco only after injecting and making the AC deep put the eye into the anterior chamber with the help of a uh, McPherson forceps or lens holding forceps and then you can actually go via the side port and use a Sinsky hook if it's not directly going to the bag and hook at the optic haptic junction or at the hole of this and bring it into position. Remember to dial always in the manner that I have shown. While inserting a lens you should notice that the trailing haptic is like in the form of an L or a C. An inverted LOC is the leading haptic. Let's take a look at another video. Now here I am actually using a Simco cannula as an AC maintainer and this is a PMMA lens. I have held it. The leading haptic has gone straight into the bag over here. With the same forceps only, I will put the eye inside with the help of this technique which is known as loop technique into the bag. Let's look at another video. Here again I am using an AC maintainer, uh, Simco like an AC maintainer. I put the aisle, I am having difficulty. So I have gone with a dialer, hook the holes or the optic haptic junction and I am putting it into the back. Again now this time I am using the irrigation part of a bimanual IA, can, IA apparatus and I am having difficulty to put the IA. So what I do is you should always inject OVD inside. It makes surgery so easy. See, initial cases always do your IOL implantations under visco. There's, there's shallow AC, put visco. There's no harm in putting visco again and again. See, remember one thing, you can play football in a deep anterior chamber, but a shallow anterior chamber can be quite troublesome and can result in devastating complications. So when the tunnel comes apart, now closing the tunnel after hydrating everything and closing the wounds, you can just give a subconjunctival injection or you can even you know cauterize the conjunctival that is remaining or you can actually suture the conjunctiva and if when you are in doubt over the tunnel if there is any problem the TC is not forming always suture even the smallest amount of doubts you should suture remember one thing it is always better to handle everything at the same sitting in the table itself operating table rather than make the patient go for under sur another surgery. So my message to the juniors is that never try to do fast surgery. It will automatically come once you've mastered the art. Start with the simple cases. Concentrate on quality over quantity. Thank you very much.